Hi there, I care and you matter. I'm Shannon and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a death of a dream and the resurrection of another. <laughs> um, I laugh because, well, I've done some crying. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. If you have been here on my channel for any length of time, you know that I set out to write a children's book, which I did. I actually wrote an entire middle grade fiction book, a novel, and then I wrote half of another one. <clears throat> and I loved it. It was fun. And then I dropped a bit of coin and made myself an entire little mini art studio. And if you watch one of my other videos, you'll notice that the background here is very different than it once was. My first degree is in production illustration and I loved it. Uh, fast forward many, many years, I came down with severe psoriatic arthritis, which I ended up losing my job. Um, long story for another day. And that's when I went back to school to be a teacher. And fast forward 20 years <laughs> And uh, menopause has given me a gift. It has made the psoriatic arthritis calm down so much so that I thought I would be able to take up drawing again. Yeah, no. <laughs> I actually went in for my normal checkup with my rheumatologist and she said that um, with the change of menopause, yes, psoriatic arthritis will often calm down, but unfortunately, that's about the same time that um, osteoarthritis really rears its ugly head. And son of a gun, if that did not happen, suddenly I could not um, use my wrist. And I tried everything. I tried wraps that I, I, braces that I wrapped around my wrist. I tried rests for my arm while I was drawing. I tried full braces. I tried drawing for an hour, then taking a break, then coloring for an hour. None of it was working. And I actually ended up going to see a sports medicine doctor who did x-rays and determined that it was um, osteoarthritis due to a really old injury. Back in the fourth grade, I went to a skating party with my class, fell, knocked myself out, and while I was knocked out, the reports were that somebody roller skated over my right wrist. Essentially what happened is I had a compound fracture breaking both bones in my wrist, causing this part of my hand and my arm to get on top of, my arm was literally half the size because this whole part of my arm shifted and moved on top of this. It was a horrific ordeal. Um, the orthopedic surgeon thought I was going to have nerve damage. By the grace of God, I did not need surgery, <clears throat> but I was in a cast for well over a year and I had fine function. And um, while I knew that this bone stopped growing because it broke the growth plate, I had function in this hand. Well, you know, here we are. <laughs> I don't have as much function as I once did. That caused me to become incredibly depressed. And what once brought me joy, my little art studio that I was reclaiming a previous dream, I was actually really enjoying the process. I did not enjoy the pain. Um, and unfortunately, the pain was interfering with my ability to care for my household, in particular, my, our youngest son, Mark, who has special needs. He can't, he can't take care of himself fully, so he needs my help, and I have to be able to function. Ooh, I might get teary here. <sighs> so my husband walked in and saw me tearing up my studio, and he said, you're redoing it again? You just did that. And it dawned on me that it's a form of therapy for me to have something that I am fully 100% in control in. Because um, in my life, in my household, I don't have control over a lot. Um, even with my own disability, I don't have my own body. I don't have control over a lot. But my little closet here, this is my domain. And it is the way I want it. And it is clean. And it is tidy. <laughs> And it is full of my favorite things. And the art supplies, even though they'd been only out for probably about a month, were a reminder, a, a visual reminder on a daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis of things I could no longer do. I could probably go in for surgery. That was brought up. Uh, no. 
<laughs> I, I, I don't have time or uh, ability um, or latitude to recover. Um, I've had two surgeries in the past, uh, total hysterectomy and my gallbladder removed. And oh boy, recovering from those while caring for my other son. Yeah, Lord help me. <laughs> I wasn't gonna I wasn't going to voluntarily go through that again. So here we are. Am I sorry that I poured my heart and soul into these books that I wrote? Nope. I enjoyed the process. It should I continue? No, absolutely not. Not good for my mental health. So I took a day. I tore everything out of the little art studio, all my colored pencils, everything. And I gave myself a couple days to think about it because the thing about me is I am not happy unless I'm working on a project. So I, I, I need to have something creatively that I'm working on. And it dawned on me, you know what? I've had quite a few of you people, all of you viewers have been so wonderful in your comments and so encouraging. But there have been a few of you who have reached out via the contact form on my website. And if you go there, you're going to notice some changes because... Yeah, remember, death of one dream, resurrection of another. <sighs> I want to say how much I appreciate the encouragement that you gave me when you wrote in those kind words. And I've decided to use this opportunity. Yes, I had a plan, but now I have a pivot. And now I'm just going to go full on into that pivot. And that pivot is going to be, I can sh still tell stories. <laughs> They're just not going to be fiction. I have got a crap ton of real stories um, in this little head of mine that I'm going to be sharing uh, both in video form and in book form. And those stories are going to be coupled with strategies, things that I've learned, real practical advice. I am not a uh, mental health professional. I don't have a slew of letters behind my name. I am just a former teacher who taught kids how to read, how to write, and realized that, huh, I needed real change in my life. And if I could teach kids those fundamental skills, then surely I could work hard to teach myself how to create effective change too. And that has been a years long process, but I've, I've done it. I have, and I'm still doing it to be honest with you, but I've done it to the point where my husband and my older son and myself, we've all witnessed changes. Sorry, my phone is blowing up with all these emails. I have successfully made change. That doesn't mean I've conquered all my challenges, but it does mean that I haven't settled for making do. I have strived and I have succeeded to make many situations better. And that's what I'm going to do in this situation. My wrist still hurts like the Dickens. <laughs> and that's not going away. And while I don't want to be defined by my limitations, I can use them to help guide me and course correct to dreams and ambitions and plans and progress that would be better suited for where I am right now physically and where I am in my own life. So in the next probably week or two, you're going to be seeing some major changes on this channel. One, I'm rebranding my website again, shannamadiski.com. Link in the description below. I'm rebranding my Etsy shop. Again, link in the description below. But I'm also, I'm going to still be doing Let's Chat videos like this. I'm going to be giving updates on my life. Just, you know, chewing the fat kind of talk to the camera videos. But I'm also going to be trying to share um, like a weekly show. I'm going to call it Stories and Strategies with Shannon um, because I want to share the kind of information and encouragement and tips and tricks and hacks that I wish I had had 14, 15, 20 years ago. Because every form of self-help that I've reached out for over the years has been unbelievably overwhelming and caused more harm than it did good. I needed things that were helpful, not harmful. And when you're overwhelmed and you're in a place of, I don't want to say mental anguish, but maybe you're just tired of where you are. You're tired of being stuck and you reach out for help 
whether that be in my situation, I went to many counselors. Oh, that's another story for another day. But I tried books. I tried many, 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 many books. And I don't even want to think about the amount of money that I spent on that because I would get home. I'd be in the bookstore. I'd be on Amazon and I'd think, okay, this is great. The back of the book, the blurb sounds great. I'm going to really focus on finding time to read these books. But many of them were novels. And while, yes, you want value for your money, you want a lot of good stuff, I can't tell you how frustrated I got when I would actually purpose and intently read a book from cover to cover only to hear the author repeating him or herself over and over and over. And it's like, my goodness, will you please value my time? (laughs) I understand you're trying to give me value for my money, but repeating the same stuff over and over and over is not value. It is a waste of my time and it's a waste of my money. And I got jaded. And so much of it just was kind of like, well, duh. And um, I stopped. I stopped buying the books because I stopped. I did not want to be sucker punched anymore. And so I want to write the opposite. Um, I read a book a little while ago. I'm going to wrap this up here. I know I'm just jabbering on. I read a book. It's called Smart Brevity. And it's not, you can be simple and concise and still be insightful. Um, it's, it's not about being short in content. It's about being concise and clear in delivery. And that's really what I'm going to aim for. I'm going to aim for stories that are entertaining, stories that will always be real. Sometimes they'll be funny. Sometimes they won't. Um, because I'm also going to tr- strive to be very transparent. I'm going to share not just my triumphs, because there have been a few of those. I'm going to share what I learned. I'm going to share the everyday application. And you know what? I'm going to share my mistakes too, because oh, there have been a number of those, and those have been quite entertaining to look back on. And if you can't laugh at yourself, well, then, you know, what's the point? <laughs> so... This site or this channel used to be Hope, Cope, and Nope, and it still will be that at its core. But I'm changing it to Stories and Strategies with Shannon because ultimately I am a storyteller. And now I'm just moving from fiction back into nonfiction. And I'm going to share little snippets, little snapshots of my life and ways that um, I hope that you can improve yours. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching this entire video. And I hope, if you you are a current subscriber, I hope that you'll continue to follow me on this journey, sharing my stories and uh, gaining insight from my strategies and hacks. And if you're new here, if this sounds like something that you might enjoy, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and joining our community because that is what it is. Uh, You guys, you subscribers and your comments, They help me as much as I hope even just my company helps you. So hopefully we can make each other's life and world a little better. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.